Hello, welcome to Fireside Chats. My name is Magla Pillay, and it is my pleasure to introduce to you today Sister Denise, who has been practicing Raj Yoga meditation for over four decades. Today's topic is entitled Border Control. On this series and within the context of this subject as well as the entire series, we look at the core of spirituality. We look at how spirituality impacts on one's consciousness. We look at the relationship that you as an individual have with God, if any, and whether you enjoy a sincere, real and intimate relationship with the Divine, whomsoever you believe Him or her to be. We also ask you to ask yourselves questions like, are you happy? Do you lead a balanced life? Is your inner and outer world something that you are happy with? Or is there room for change and improvement? We will be covering a variety of subjects on this show. And it is my pleasure to say hello right now to Sister Denise. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. And welcome. This is Denise, border control. We're not talking about the Department of Customs and Excise. We are not talking about um, uh, the harbor of any given country. We are referring to something far more subtle than that. Um, how would you define border control in the spiritual sense? Well, it's very analogous to um, the border of a country. And in a country, you um, have certain rules that you decided upon and um, that is what you state and then everything has to happen according to that. So anyone who comes who is undesirable for whatever reason, they get stopped at the border and sent back home. So in the same way, uh, there are things that I want to uh, enter into your inner world, into your mind, your soul, through your sense perceptions. Our eyes, our ears, mostly, are the doorways through which things come in. Uh, you must have had things that you have seen that you just close your eyes to and say, no, I, I don't want to see that. So you can close your eyes, you put your hand over your ears, I don't want to hear that, you see. Um, but it goes in anyway. Now, border control that's effective uh, is something that you do actually with your mind, because your mind is um, so connected with your sense organs that anything that um, you perceive through your sense organs it will go right into your mind, sit there, it'll penetrate the very deep recesses of your being and it um, does its work, it, it has its own impact and so you need to be able to decide what's allowed in and what's not allowed in. When you have a really good sense of self-regard and self-respect then you will not allow anything in which is an invasion, which is a contamination, which is going to um, disturb you or distress you. You, you keep it um, outside. And for that you have certain spiritual powers. Um, we use the term Maya or illusion or negativity or Avan, or various different words are used to refer to negative energy. And what you want to do in your border control is to keep the negative out. Uh, because if you allow it in, then it will contaminate your inner world, and you want to keep your inner world pure, because that is your whole purpose of doing your spiritual work. And part of what you have is you have... Um, negativity 
that has come from the outside, taken root inside, and you have, as it were, your homegrown terrorists, which will be operating on the inside of your being uh, in terms of old grudges and resentments that happened a long time ago and they're still disturbing you and they're still actually driving your emotions and driving your behaviors and that you want to clean out. So wherever you find anything inside that is garbage or contamination, you have to identify it and uh, put it out, let it go. And letting go of something means don't think about it. Don't think about it means it comes up, presents itself to be thought about, and you say, no, I've let go of you, you go. Mm. Or something that wants to come from the outside, if you have a good power of discrimination, you'll see it coming from far. And you'll position yourself in such a way that anything that comes from that side, um, you know, one of the poses you can have is that of the detached observer. So it's happening, but it's not happening to me. So it's occurring, but it doesn't go in, you see. If it goes in to your heart and damage your heart, that's what you don't want. You see, so this is the kind of border control that we need to exercise. Another word for it is boundaries, you know. And uh, even with people, you know, there are sometimes people who want to be in your life uh, because they want to use you in some way for their own purposes, but you don't want them in your life, so you also create a boundary. And uh, you learn how to say no how to say thank you very much, have a nice day, or see you later, and I don't need you in my life, all sorts of ways in which you you be very specific about who you want in your life, who you don't want in your life. You have the right. Hmm. Mr. Denise, um, it's not a question of just a decision, is it? Because um, there are millions across the globe who would like to be free from negativity, but who don't know how. Is, is it just a question, according to you, of making a decision? Um, today, I do not want to go into any forms of negative thinking, or um, do you require something else to help you with this process? No, there are many things that are involved. A decision is very important. That's where it starts, doesn't it? Yes, okay. absolutely. But you also have to have the skill, and you also have to be adept at um, ensuring that you don't, um, you know, let everything in and then say, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to let you in, you have to get out, well, they won't l leave, you know, it's like squatters. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you have to be very um, competent in terms of how you position yourself vis-a-vis -vis the external world. And, and it has to be a very clear message that only by invitation, can you come inside? And for that, you have to have good, um, you know, not hypervigilance, but some amount of vigilance, because you need to be able to see what's coming from far so that you can close your gates. You know, you don't want to be living in Fort Knox, you know, with all your windows closed. You need fresh air, you need openness, but you need to be able to close it when it's time to close. And sometimes if you see some sort of an attack happening, because that does happen from time to time, you see it from a distance, uh, adjust yourself, close everything, and when it passes, you open up again. And so that's, that's a skill, you know, that has to do with farsightedness, you know. And then also don't get trapped, you know, there'll be... Bye. I don't know, Trojan horse. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> there, are ma there are many of those. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, something that looks nice. Oh, yes, looks nice. Come in and then inside it's all full of beetles and bugs, you know, that <laughs> mess up everything. Mm -hmm. And so you have to be very discerning, very discriminating. All this is about the powers. And, of course, you accumulate powers as you become more and more experienced. Mm.
Okay. So, Sister Denise, in the acquisition of skills and power, um, is it a question? Is it a question of uh, trial and error where you find out what works for you? Because um, whatever you're dealing with on the inside is in intangible, it's invisible, um, and you only have your thoughts and your feelings as a yardstick by which to measure um, what's going on. Um, so. Um, how do you switch on the torch? How do you see and how do you know whether you, what you're doing is successful? I think what happens when you um, practice to be more internalized and operating from the inside, these things which you call invisible and intangible, they're quite visible and quite tangible. Mm -hmm. You know, you know when your thoughts are going off track, you know when your feelings are deluded and you immediately bring them back. This is where your intellect, that part of the consciousness which is connected with the conscience, can discern immediately what's off and what's right and you immediately reset it and reposition it and make it right so that you're always operating uh, where you are fully aware of what's happening. You must not allow yourself to get deluded. It doesn't matter if somebody lies to you as long as you know that they're lying because you won't be deceived. Mm. It doesn't matter if people behave badly as long as you don't get victimized by that, you see. So you have to all the time play these shots that are coming to you whether they're good or bad doesn't matter. What matters is how you play them. You play to win. Hmm. Um, how do you know whether you've succeeded in um, maintaining a uh, distance, a um, respectful and comfortable distance between yourself and negativity, yourself and others? I think it's a... Um a vibration, a feeling, um, your conscience, you know, as it becomes more and more refined, it'll tell you these slight little things. It'll tell you, yes, that was good. No, that wasn't good. Play it differently next time. Because each time we play a scene, each time we return the shot that is sent to us, um, there's a resonance of it, you see where it goes, you see what happens, you can evaluate it. And um, the whole process of the practice of spirituality is observation of the self. How do I do things? How do I manage things? In very subtle ways. And you're continuously improving your game, as it were. Mm. Mr. Denise, you mentioned self-deception earlier. Um, do we do it consciously? Do we do it because we are careless? Do we? Um, what are the dangers involved around um, self-deception? Because I get the impression it was rather feeling than rather than what you said earlier that uh, the greatest sin is self-deception. <laughs> so. <laughs> Um, it came across not via your words, but by the energy that you were emitting. So, um, is that of, uh, one of the criteria that you use? Well, you don't. You want to be clear. You want to be able to perceive things very clearly, and then you know that you're ahead. Uh, I think when you're beginning this process, you have to contend with the fact that you are loose, you are naive, you are overreactive, you are emotional, you are all of these things. And so you're constantly tightening up and improving yourself on every level. And it's a continuing process of refinement. So you see from the results how you're doing, mm. because the results are clear. Mm. Okay. How do you know what the right distance is between you and another person? It's a calibration. And I think you have to try this way, that way, far, close, this, that, and just see how it plays. And as you do that, you get it right. 
it's um, almost an aesthetic uh, choice. From a spiritual perspective, is it necessary to keep a certain amount of distance between you and every single human being, even those uh, people that you love? And the reason that I'm asking this question is because um, in the world, uh, intimacy is regarded as being one of the greatest joys of humanity. The the um, closeness to another human being. There are many who consider that uh, to not have an intimate relationship, an intimate adult long-term relationship, if you don't, one doesn't have that, uh, what is the point of being alive? So, um, okay, my question is, uh, is it... Um, to maintain effective border control, does it mean that you have a um, distance between you and the people that you love as well, or just between colleagues, strangers? You know, you are going to decide about that distance, but you know, once a person has tasted a relationship with God and also listened to some of the things that God teaches, one of which is have all relationships with one alone. And that means you, you have many things that take the form of barriers between yourself and God. What you want to do is take down those barriers because barriers between you and God mean that you are not able to take benefit. Now, um, when you want to have a complete intimate relationship with another human being, uh, it, it eventually it becomes a, a substitute for the fact that you can't have a complete relationship with God. But once you have a complete relationship with God, then your relationship with people is different. Your relationship with things is different. Because having a complete relationship with God means that you are able to fill yourself completely. One of the things that God says is that all relationships at this particular time in the time cycle are relationships of karmic account. So when you drop all the barriers between yourself and another person, then is where the suffering begins. So um, if you don't know that then you put yourself into that trap you know it's that you become attracted to someone why you say oh, well they look nice they seem nice they have what i need but behind that the energy of attraction between people is an unresolved karmic account and it's a sort of um, device in the machinery of the settlement of karma to cause people to come together and be close enough for the process of suffering to occur. And then that attraction turns into repulsion, but you can't get away because you're bonded, you see, or you're tied. This is why we call it karmic bondage. Karmic bondage means you suffer and you can't get away. And then it's a kind of a purging of the debt through suffering. And so this is a very important part of God's teachings in which God says, have all relationships with me because wherever you get attracted to people, behind that is some sort of karmic bondage that has to be settled through suffering. And if you stay in close relationship with God, that is called yoga. So you can actually um, finish your karmic account through yoga and not have to go through the suffering, which is considered preferable because who likes suffering, you know, if you can avoid it. So this is why this way is preferred. So, Sister Denise, um, um, how does your relationship with the divine um, impact? Uh, you said once you have a relationship with God, your relationships with people and things change. Um, take us more into that. And uh, what is your relationship, the nature of your relationship with God that causes such a big change here on earth? Because 
anytime you're in relationship with anyone, you give something to them, they give something to you. That's why you're in relationship, is because of what you get out of it. Uh, but what God is saying is that you can't get very much at this time because of the debt situation. The so, debt situation. D E B T. Yes. Okay. Not D E A T H. No, no, debt. Okay. Debt. debt. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, people are in karmic debt with each other pretty much all over the world. This is why there is human suffering on this scale. So it's just karmic accounts getting settled. And because people don't know that they're getting settled, they recreate new ones. So you suffer, you create something that's going to make you suffer again, even more. And so you're tied, tied, tied in this horrible uh, knot. And uh, this is one of the reasons why God is called the liberator. He will take humanity in its tangled state and say, just relate to me and you will become free. Uh, because this has an impact on loosening these karmic bondages. So you can have very beautiful relationships with people, but they don't become enmeshments and they don't become mutual give and take of unpleasantness or a harm or violence or insult or whatever it is that people fall into uh, when they get too tied up with each other, you know. So you keep the distance that um, actors would have. So even if, you know, on a, in a theater or on a movie set, actors are playing the role of lover and beloved, but they're not actually lover and beloved. So they can play, but they don't fall into the trap. I mean, of course, some people get so caught up into it that the movie becomes the reality and then they fall into big trouble. But, you know, this is how the teachings of God are helping people to come out of their karmic debts and to become free. Okay. So, Sister Denise, um, how does um, what you just said impact on one's, well, mental health? Uh, it impacts enormously because, Castle. well, your mental health is very much connected with, you know, you, you may say, okay, I'm coming into a relationship with this gorgeous person who's going to do all this and that and the other. You create all sorts of expectations. Then you get disappointed, then you get angry, then the relationship changes into one of, um, you know, mutual dissatisfaction uh, and because of the expectations, because those expectations are unfulfilled. And there's a very interesting passage in the Gita about how attraction turns into attachment and the unfulfilled expectations and then the anger and then eventually the intelligence is destroyed. And so this is really what we're dealing with. People's intelligence about relationships is very stupid because they don't know what's going on. And so they behave in disastrous ways which just creates more and more and more suffering. It's a cycle of suffering. And so the wonder of God is who understands all these laws, who understands exactly how trapped people are in karmic accounts that have accumulated over maybe even centuries, over many births, and then how to extract each soul from their bondage. This is what God is engaged in. It's a mm. wonderful thing. Sister Denise, you know, on a practical level, um, we all tend to gravitate towards things that we like, um, and conversely, we um, have a, some sort of kind of bizarre attraction to things that we don't like. But say you gravitate towards things that you like. Say, I play badminton because I enjoy the sport. I swim because I enjoy that. I choose this profession over that profession because this is um, how I like to interact. I prefer a job that involves communication as opposed to sitting behind a computer the entire day. So we're um, 
in the process of um, making choices based on what we like okay? but, and also people whom we like. But um, are you then saying do what you want to do but then create some distance between, um, create a, a distance? What, what, what is the message there? Well, it's a barrier. How do you live? How do you, how do you, how, where do you find your happiness then? Because does your happiness come from those things or do you get it from another source? You know, the things that we like and dislike are also according to our sanskaras. Our personality traits. Uh, our personality traits, our um, tendencies, our talents, all of these things, they're accumulated over a long, long period of time. You know, you may study music in one birth and the next birth you're just naturally able to play music, to enjoy music, and so you go there, uh, or the same with sport, or whatever, you see. And the same with things that you dislike. It's all connected with things that have to do with before this life and after this life. You know, there's a, another aspect of destiny that uh, you can take into consideration also. But the uh, point about um, not getting too caught up in people, places and things is that you think that they are going to make you happy, but happiness doesn't come from those things. Happiness is a byproduct of pure karma. So if you want to be happy, then you need to study the laws of karma and then select what kind of happiness you want and what kind of karma you should do in order to receive that kind of happiness. You know, some karma will enable you to experience wealth, some karma will enable you to experience beauty, some karma will enable you to have health. It's all very uh, capable of being calculated. And so what uh, Raj Yoga does teach you to do is uh, ask yourself the question, what do you really, really want? And then, okay, and once you've identified that, then what do you have to do to get that? Mm. Okay, so unfortunately, we have to say goodbye to you right now. Thank you so much for your words of wisdom. Thank you. Thank you so much, brothers and sisters, for joining us. Denise has shared her insight into the fascinating subject of border control. And like we stated earlier, the title is uh, not the content. So Sister Denise has shared how one should maintain what she calls respectful boundaries between you and other people, yourself and the negativity within your own mind and yourself and things. She also shared the secrets of the law of karma and how it impacts on our relationship with people and with things. So um, I hope you have taken at least mental notes. Use this talk to turn the torch on your own life and ask yourself, where are you at? Uh, are there things and people that um, have encroached too much into your life or are you too distant from people and things? Uh, only you will know the answer. Thank you so much for joining us and goodbye.